Complete hydatidiform mole is a form of gestational trophoblastic disease. Complete mole is diploid and it consists of uh, two sets of chromosomes, both of them from the father. The most common mechanism is the fertilization of, the, of uh, the ovum without nucleus. So the ovum lacks the genetic material and it is fertilized by one sperm, which then replicates. Less commonly, we can see the fertilization of the ovum without nucleus by two sperms. Well, let's start with the morphology and then I will try to cover very briefly the um, pathophysiology mechanism at the end of the video. In case of complete mole, all the villi are enlarged, edematous and atypical. We do not see fetal component or normal villi as in case of partial mole. These large chorionic villi create a macroscopic grape-like appearance. They look like big watery grapes. Because the fetus is not present, we do not see nucleated red blood cells. Probably the most useful sign uh, is prominent trophoblastic proliferation. In case of normal chorionic villi, the trophoblastic proliferation should be only mild and polar. It means it is localized only in one pole of the chorionic villi. In case of hydatidiform mole, the trophoblastic proliferation is circumferential and it is very prominent and we can also see some trophoblastic atypical features or cytomorphological atypia of the trifo uh, trophoblastic cells. Quite typical is lacy appearance of these syncytial trophoblastic cells. So here we see fused cells uh, with multiple uh, nuclei associated with these fenestrations. So this is lacy appearance of the syncytial trophoblast. The intermediate trophoblast can have enlarged atypical hyperchromatic irregular nuclei. And this is the cytotrophoblast here. The large villi typically have these central cisterns. So here, so we have a huge cistern, which is this acellular edematous area. Uh, some of the villi have very irregular outlines with papillary projections, cauliflower-like uh, appearance here and there. There are trophoblastic inclusions and invaginations. However, this is more prominent in a partial hydatidiform mole. But most importantly, here we see the lacy-like uh, syncytial trophoblast, uh, circumferential proliferation of the trophoblast, and again, some cytomorphological atypia of the intermediate trophoblast here. We always need to exclude uh, invasive complete mole, which is associated with invasion and infiltration of the myometrium and venous channels. Because of these vascular invasion, invasive mole can metastasize primarily to uh, lungs. And of course, we need to exclude choriocarcinoma. If the complete mole looks like this, then the diagnosis is quite straightforward. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Sometimes the morphology is much less typical and less prominent. And it is especially difficult to differentiate some cases of a very early complete mole from hydropic abortion. In these cases, it is really good to use uh, immunohistochemistry for P57. P57 is some um, cyclin-dependent kinase, which is not very important. But what is important is the fact that the gene for uh, P57 is strongly paternally imprinted, and it is uh, predominantly expressed from the maternal allele. Therefore, immunohistochemical nuclear positivity for P57 would be seen in uh, the hydropic abortion, in the partial hydatidiform mole, however not in the complete mole, because we do not have any maternal genes in this tissue. The only genetic material that we have here is from the father. So we would see negativity in these mesenchymal cells and the, in the cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast. Maternal decidua and intervillous trophoblast would be positive for 57, uh, P57, and it is commonly used as positive control on the slide. And now, very interesting question I once got from my students. I actually get a lot of interesting questions, and I usually don't know how to answer them. And I also didn't know how to answer this one when I got it. So why? Uh, so when we have two sets of chromosomes from the father here, why don't we see the normal fetal development where the fetus would be actually the clone of the father? 
what is the reason for all of these grape-like structures? Well, the mechanism is not completely understood, but we know that it has probably something to do with ev evolutionary competition or Darwinism. When we have the DNA, that, uh, which is composed of many, many genes, then some genes can be suppressed uh, by the process called methylation. The paternal DNA is then associated with methylation of different genes than uh, maternal DNA. So it can behave differently. When we have one set of chromosomes uh, from the father and one set of chromosomes from the mother, then everything is okay. So when we have the two sets of chromosomes from the father, uh, that leads to the overgrowth of the syncytiotrophoblast. However, when we see the dual egg patterned methylation, so both uh, sets of chromosomes are from the mother, that leads to a devotion of the resources to the embryo with an underdeveloped syncytiotrophoblast. And one possible explanation for this phenomenon is that the male genes driving for the high investment into the fetus, however, the female genes driving for resource restriction to maximize the number of children. So maternal genes want all the children to survive. However, paternal genes want only the one fetus to survive. Now, people usually don't have many multiple pregnancies. We can see some twins from time to time. However, that was not always the case in the past. So during uh, the evolution, it was much more common to have multiple pregnancies. And the mother is always pretty sure that all of the babies include uh, their own genes. The father, however, never knows. But even if you have just twins, it is technically, theoretically possible that one child is yours, but the second one is not. Well, at least if the twins are not ident identical. And therefore, the evolution is probably responsible for the explanation why we don't see father's clones in case of molar pregnancy. I hope it makes sense, and uh, thanks for watching.